Today, we're looking at the state of the LLM wars as Anthropic releases an iOS app for Claude as well as a new Teams account. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Yesterday, AI users got a very delightful update when Anthropic announced that they had finally dropped an iOS app for Claude. What we're going to do today is talk about exactly what was announced, because that was just one part of it, a little bit about how Anthropic seems to be positioning itself from a branding perspective, and mostly the state of competition between LLMs in the wake of the latest news. So first of all, what was announced? Well, one part of it, like I said, was Claude finally has a mobile app. On the one hand, the app gives you access to a mobile version of the chatbot, but it also has integrated multimodal capabilities so that you can upload a photo and interact with the chatbot that way. If you've used something like ChatGPT's mobile app, you know that this actually opens up an entirely different world of use cases that can be really, really valuable. You can, for example, take a photo of some hardware thing you're trying to fix and get help figuring out how to actually do it. You can also use it as sort of a personalized tour guide or history buff, pointing it at some exhibit or some piece of art in a museum and getting more information. The point being that when it comes to these leading chatbots, I really think that a mobile experience is not just nice to have from a choice perspective, do I want to do this on the web or on mobile? It really is a whole category of uses that become unlocked when you have that capacity. The app is free for all Claude users, including those who use the free version, as well as those who are pro users who pay $20 a month. And based on that, you can use any of the main Claude 3 models. When it comes to community response, I would say mostly people were just excited to finally have access to Claude via mobile. Although I did see a couple people point out that there are some subtle ways in which Anthropic was extending its brand positioning. As Morgan from X puts it, Anthropic unashamedly showing their highbrow in the Claude App Store images. Specifically, they give an example of someone who's uploaded a PDF of painting after Durer, a text file of cumulus poems, and a PDF of classical composition with the question, Claude, what are five blog titles about these texts? The first one that Claude suggests is the importance of clouds in Albrecht Durer's landscape etchings, a study of classical composition techniques. So yeah, Anthropic is definitely positioning for a certain type of person. What's more, if you look at the 15-second promo video they released on Twitter as well, it's clear that they are trying not just to appeal to white-collar professionals, or at least not some generic, boring business user. The main text of the video is, Claude is AI for architects, lawyers, economists, crafters, scientists, musicians, learners, connoisseurs, artists, academics, caregivers, engineers, and more. It feels in its positioning and its coloring very sort of artisanal. And it may be that that was a very explicit choice to differentiate it from the other thing that was announced, which was their new team plan. In fact, when it comes to the hierarchy of the announcements, team plan was actually positioned first. Anthropic writes, The team plan enables ambitious teams to create a workspace with increased usage for members and tools for managing users and billing. It's the best way for teams across industries to leverage our next generation Claude 3 family model. The team plan costs $30 per user per month. So what does it come with for that 50% premium over the pro plan? One is just increased usage. Anthropic says that with this plan versus the pro plan, every teammate can, quote, significantly increase the number of chats they have with Claude. It comes with a 200K context window. This is aimed, they say, at processing long documents like research papers and legal contracts, discussing complex topics like financial forecasting and product road mapping, as well as maintaining multi-step conversations like customer support inquiries. Now, they also say that more team features are coming. In the coming weeks, they write, we will be releasing additional collaboration features, including citations from reliable sources to verify AI-generated claims, integrations with data repositories like code bases or CRMs, and iterating with colleagues on AI-generated documents or projects. In fact, the video that they released alongside the team announcement isn't about stuff that's available right now. It's about those collaboration features that are coming. And really, it looks to move from a chatbot that has some increased usage to a shared workspace that is AI-powered. When it came to the community response here, things that were definitely seen as benefits as compared to particularly ChatGPT's team model was the higher usage limits in the 200k context window. People are also excited to see how this future access to code bases and CRMs will work. The biggest complaints was that Anthropic didn't give many details around data privacy, voice input doesn't seem to be enabled, and there is a five-seat minimum as compared to the two-seat minimum of ChatGPT teams. Still, I think when push comes to shove, most people are generally enthusiastic that Anthropic is walking down this path and kind of waiting to see the deeper collaboration features before really pinning down how good they think it is compared to the competition. Now, let's speak about that competition. The competitive landscape recently has changed a bit, specifically because of Meta's Llama 3. When Meta Llama 3 started performing very close to the state of the art of both the GPT-4 Turbo as well as Claude 3 Opus, it definitely changed the way that some people thought about how this industry is going to evolve. Basically, the question is, 
If there's an easily accessible open source version that's close enough to state of the art, does that make state of the art models a commodity? Put differently, will it reduce enterprises' willingness to pay a premium for the state of the art when they can get access to a close enough version for cheaper? Lumita Wealth CEO Ram Alawalia writes The disruptors are getting disrupted. Devs are replacing OpenAI with MetaLama with no degradation. Why? Price is cheaper. GPT 4 is $10 per million tokens input, Meta is 60 cents for that amount. Who will pay the $20 a month OpenAI subscription? Zuck just took a major swing at Microsoft. Bindu Reddy writes, OpenAI says they are going to steamroll startups and make them obsolete. Last time I checked, Llama 3 is 10x cheaper and is as performant as GPT-4. Meta AI is free and available on Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp compared to ChatGPT, which cost $20. Grok and Google have integrated Gen AI results into their core products. Technically speaking, isn't OpenAI already obsolete? Now, while many pointed out that that's not exactly what Sam Altman was talking about, the context for that comment was a podcast conversation where he basically said that it was probably not the right idea for startups to try to fill gaps in what OpenAI could do when it was likely that the capacity of GPT-5 or GPT-6 was just going to fill those gaps anyways. But I think the broader point that she's making around the new competition that OpenAI faces because of one, the lower cost of these open source alternatives, and two, the availability for these big tech companies that have big distribution platforms like Google or Meta's family of apps to plug their AI in does bring up questions about the long-term economic viability, even if companies like OpenAI, or in the context of our conversation today, Anthropic, are operating at the state of the art. No one can presume to know the answer to this question. And anyone who says confidently that they are sure that enterprises will just work with an open source alternative, or that consumers will by and large just use the models that are plugged into the apps they already use, it's just too early to tell. We don't know how big the premium will be for different types of users on any gap between the state of the art and close to state of the art. We don't know how the AI agent age will change this as well. The gap between state of the art when it comes to agent capacity and close to state of the art could be significant enough that it is worth the premium because the value derived from the premium version is still so much less expensive than whatever process it's replacing. There is also the simplicity and convenience factor. Professor Ethan Mollick tweeted recently, at least in the sample of firms I talked to, seeing a surprising amount of organizations deciding to skip or at least not commit exclusively to customized LLM solutions and instead just get a bunch of people in the company ChatGPT Enterprise and have them experiment and build GPTs. This is not shocking to me at all. Yes, theoretically, you would imagine that cost and customization would make some parts of the enterprise want to go with those customized solutions. But the complexity of that versus just letting people sign on to something and start using it right away and accruing value right away is a really hard trade-off. Now, the question is, is that just for the early exploration phases where companies are trying to figure out exactly what these tools are going to be good for? Could be. It could be just a byproduct for something I've talked about before, which is the bottoms-up adoption that's happening in enterprise AI. But I'm not so sure. I also don't think that they're mutually exclusive. I can see certain functions within the enterprise tending to have preference for customized solutions, while the cost of just giving everyone access to these $30 a month subscriptions for either ChatGPT Enterprise or Anthropic's new teams still just remains worth it for a huge swath of the organization. Anyway, it's a really fascinating time. We're in a transition moment where we simply don't know what's going to come out on the other side. And as of right now, Anthropic is fully in that game. That's going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. Until next time, peace.